that your spirit is here among us. Where two or three are gathered, you are with us. And Lord, that is our desire, to know nothing except Jesus Christ and him crucified. To know you, to lift you up, Lord. So I thank you that as we rest in your presence here, as we've come together, we turn to you and you alone. Have your way tonight. We've come to glorify you. You, King Jesus. Thank you. Well, welcome to Impact Thursday night. Glad that all of you are here, whether you're live or watching via Facebook or Zoom. Um, if you are watching online and you haven't been to visit us, we are in Holly Springs, Georgia, just north of Atlanta a little bit, and we'd love for you to come and visit. If you have any questions or if you have any prayer requests, please just um, send us a message, and we will most certainly uh, honor those for sure. Um, we are a group of ministers. It's not necessarily about one person. The only person it's about is King Jesus. So we've come together, and we know that the Lord is on the move. He's doing so many things, and we don't want to miss him. We want to move with him. We want to, wherever God goes, that's where we want to go. If he's not going, then we don't want to go. And he said not to go back to the old, not to do the same thing over again. So we're just walking it out, following the Holy Spirit. We really have given this night to him. We give every week to him. He's laid some uh, words and messages on a couple of people's hearts that are going to come up and share tonight. But beyond that, it's all about what he wants to do. I already know that he's given some of you out here in the audience's words to share, corporate words, words that need to be spoken, words of life that others need to hear. So I just want to encourage you, whatever you have to do to stir up the gifts within you, we're told to stir them up, whatever that is. Connect with the Lord, listen to him, whatever it may be, sitting in your seat right now, whatever, if it's reading scripture, whatever it may be, closing your eyes, eyes wide open, whatever it is, prostrate on the floor, it doesn't matter, but stir up the gifts within you because when we come together, we're told that we come together, each one with a hymn or a revelation or a song or a teaching or a, a tongue or an interpretation, but it's all for the building up of one another. And what are we building us up to? We're building us up to Jesus, right? But we need to be built up each and every one of us. The world is discouraging. We need to come together and encourage. We need to exhort one another. So I thank you, Lord. I thank you that tonight we've come together as your body and we only have one head and that's you, Jesus, and that you have your way here tonight. I thank you for the words and the messages and the exhortation and just all that you have through your people, whether it be healing or whatever it is, Lord, we're open. So come and have your way, have your way tonight. So um, I first want to bring up Chris to come and share. And as she comes up here, I'm going to pray for her um, before I completely turn it over. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for your daughter. Lord, I thank you that she has been a faithful student to study your word, to study your truth. And that she has also been a faithful steward of the revelations that you've given her to share them and to teach them to others. Lord, I thank you that just as in Ephesians 4, you've called her to be a teacher for the equipping of the saints to build us up. I thank you that tonight she shares that gift that you've given her with us. So Lord, may we receive what you have to say to us through your daughter with open hearts in Jesus' name. Thank you. <clears throat> there. I don't know. It's shining a green like a... I don't know why I have so much trouble with this thing. 
but I'm very, I need to learn. That's what I need to do. <laughs> I'm not going to be any smarter with that, so let's see. Did I do it? No. No. It's a holy segue. It's a holy hush. Everybody reflect on the Lord and don't look at us. Oh, there it is. Like an arrow to the target. This one. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So this is a corporate word that the Lord gave me this week, but it was a it was a real comfort to me personally, and so I pray that as I release it tonight that it'll be a comfort to each of you. And as I was thinking about that, just how timely it was for me to receive this word with the, my personal stuff that I'm wrestling through coming out of the pandemic and fear and going into craziness and, and all the different spirits that we're dealing with, the Lord showed me that a corporate word is really just a word for all the individuals. And so I hope and I pray that it blesses you tonight and brings you comfort as well. The, the title for it is like an arrow to the target. And this word started from a vision that the Lord gave me. And then I'll transfer into some of the scriptures that go with it as well. But the vision that the Lord gave me was I saw him, I saw the back of him, and in the distance was a target. And he had a quiver on his back and he had a bow in his hand. And he was shooting, he was taking an arrow out of the bow at a time, and he was shooting it at the target. And when the quiver was empty, the Lord went to the target, and he plucked each arrow out, and he stood it on its end, and he blew on it. And the arrow became an archer. And so that's the picture that the Lord gave me. The verses that he took me to are mostly from 2 Samuel. There's a couple others in here from Isaiah and 1 Peter, but they are pancaked in with um, two sections from 2 Samuel chapter 22. And this is um, King David who wrote this after he had been rescued from Saul on his journey to becoming a king. He said, in my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I called from his temple. He heard my voice and my cry came to his ears. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice, and he sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning, and rooted them. And I believe that we are right now in this season where we are the arrows that the Lord is grabbing, and it's a season of full surrender to his hand. Full sur he, he's taking us each out of that quiver and it's a season of full surrender. He sends the arrows out. He scatters them. And so this moment-by-moment moment obedience that we all find ourselves in, like sometimes it's, it's not even what today, God, but what right now, like in this moment, what right now, Lord, is part of what that full surrender looks like. Because all we know is that he's going to grab us. He's going to take us. And he's going to put that arrow in the bow. And so just moment by moment, obedience and full surrender. Um, so I am the skilled archer, says the Lord. I see the target. I hold the bow in my righteous right hand. As I pull you from the quiver, do not quiver with any fear. Trust my hand to send you. Trust my aim. Trust my strength. You will be like an arrow to the target. I release you now. And the next verses are from Isaiah. It says, Before I was born, the Lord called me. From my mother's womb, he has spoken my name. And this is where it's so individual, right? That the Lord says that to each of us. He made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, you are my servant in whom I will display my splendor. And when I read these verses, I really believe that we're in the place right now where we're concealed in the quiver. Like he's just now grabbing us out and beginning to shoot us towards the target. You are my servant in whom I will display my splendor. This is his glory that Joanna spoke about a couple weeks ago and that I know she's going to share some more about tonight. 
He's going to use us to display his splendor, to display his glory. But the, but the first step is the surrender as the arrow, as his arrow. It's his hand that's, that's going to do the pulling and his hand that's going to pull the bow and his hand that's going to shoot us out. The Lord says, go. You may not know the destination, but yield yourself to the flight. And that little phrase just stuck with me so much, to yield ourselves to the flight. The surrender to God's plan for us. Success is certain in my hands. And then this is a verse that's come up like probably six times for me in the last two weeks about the hand of God. Yield yourself to his hand. Why? Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Set aside self-righteous pride. This is the amplified version. So that he may exalt you to a place of honor and in service at the appropriate time. This yielding to God's hand, this hand of God, this mighty hand of God that we're under, it's not a under your thumb kind of hand. This is his blanketing hand. This is his covering hand. This is his protecting hand. This is the hand that chooses the arrow from the quiver. This is a hand that is safe to come up under and yield ourselves under. This is the hand of the God who loves us, who knows us by name, who knew us in our mother's womb, who already decided to make us sharpened arrows and who will shoot us out. The Lord is saying, I have many quivers, teams, that I am preparing to launch in this day. Straight and strong each arrow must be, but on its own, incapable of any trajectory. But in my hands, with my bow of anointing, with my vision set on the target, each one flies just as I send it. You have been pruned. Do not pick up again the confidence of the flesh. Trust only in me. Trust always in me. Yield to my righteous right hand as I send you out like an arrow to the target. And that yielding, that surrender is the, is the first piece of this vision that was so strong. Like there has, I believe there are areas in each of our lives right now, we know that we all just came through a pruning season, right? Everything that's been happening for the last four months has been raising up all kinds of stuff in each of us personally. But I believe for those that the Lord is going to send out, I believe that there is further work. There's further surrender for us to do, even to a surrendering of our desires and our dreams and our plans that we would say, Lord, your desires over mine, your dreams over mine, your plans over mine, to a higher level of surrender with the Lord. But when we do that, when we do that, when we, when we surrender those things to him, we're positioning ourselves. We're positioning ourselves perfectly to hit the mark. And then remember in the vision, after we hit the mark, the Lord goes over to the target and he plucks those arrows out and he breathes life into them. And the arrow becomes an archer. And each archer has his own quiver. And at that point, the archer takes an arrow out of his quiver and he begins to shoot at a target that's further off than the first. And so the first verse is from 2 Samuel. We're just a little bit earlier in the chapter where he was praising God because God roots the arrows and God roots the lightning. But now he sees himself as the archer. He's gone through this process of full surrender to the Lord, of fully trusting the Lord with the trajectory of his life. And he tells in, in these verses, he says, he trains my hand for war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You have given me the shield of your salvation and your gentleness made me great. You gave me a wide place for my steps under me and my feet did not slip. The Lord is saying, you are now filled with greater strength, greater discernment, a mighty warrior clothed with my gentleness, headed out into a wide place, a secure place to secure the victory for your king and your kingdom with an arrow in your hand aimed at the target. And I believe this word, it, there's, there was so much in it that, that the Lord showed me that comforted me. First was that moment by moment yielding to his next step. As the arrow, we have no authority. We're taken when we're taken. We're shot where we're shot. And we have to have that full level of surrender. I believe also that the verses that the Lord led me to, I believe this is a message specifically, maybe not specifically, but, but with an extra emphasis to anyone in leadership 
Maybe you're a parent. Maybe you're head over something at work. Maybe you're a ministry leader. Maybe you're a pastor. Because David was on his route to become a king. These are David's words in scripture. And so I believe there's significance to that in this word. Um, it's a picture of that complete surrender. God is beginning something in the spirit. We have to be careful not to hijack it in the flesh and try to reach the mark in another way besides the hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord will get us to the mark. We must surrender. I believe it's a picture of kingdom building. The Lord equips us as we yield to his hand. The arrow becomes the archer, and the archer then has a quiver that he's able to shoot from. We are raised up by the Lord, and in turn, we go and we raise others up. I believe it's also a picture of multiplication of progress in the kingdom, because if each of those arrows become an archer, and each archer has a quiver, and each archer shoots at a separate target that's out further, that's important too, that it's out further than the first, it's a model of a, of a rapid multiplication that can happen in the kingdom and with this picture that the Lord's giving us. And then the last thing that I wrote was, I believe that the quiver represents actual small groups of people that the Lord is gathering right now together that will be launched out together. And just today I looked up, I was curious because I... I've not shot a bow before, how many arrows typically fit in a quiver? And it's typically 6 to 12 arrows, sometimes up to 24, it said. So I just thank you, Father. I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, that we can trust you, that we are safe under your mighty hand. I thank you that even though we don't deserve it, you do raise us up in due time. I thank you, Father, that you invite each of us to be a part of your kingdom to play a role, to go forth, to raise others up. Father, help us keep our eyes off ourselves, Lord. Help us keep our hearts inclined to you. Lord, when the transition time comes for us to go from arrow to archer, Lord, I pray that you, you, the Holy Spirit keeps us faithful to the call that you've put on each of our lives, Father, that our primary desire would be to see you glorified, Lord, and your kingdom go forward. I pray these things in Jesus' name. I did have one more little slide. <laughs> um, so, brother, as I was sitting back there, I heard the Lord say that, tell my son that this message is for him. Tell my son that he is an arrow. And that right now he's wondered why he isn't being shot to the target, why he isn't being used by me, because the Lord has already shown you. He's given you great vision of the target, of where you're going, of what you're going to do for him, of the glory that you're going to bring, of that splendor that is going to be displayed on you as you go out of the hand of the Lord to do his will. He says, because he's shown you this and you haven't done it yet, you've become discouraged, wondering if there's something wrong with you, if you haven't done something right. He says, you've done nothing wrong. That remember what your sister spoke, that this is a time of molding. This is a time of shaping. This is a time of pruning. This is a time where you're hidden under my hand or I've pulled you away, that you are in the Lord's quiver, that you are with him, just you and him. So pull back with him. It's okay. He knows exactly when that time is right. He knows exactly when you're polished just right, when the ends and the feathers are fluff just right so that the trajectory goes straight right where he has for you to go. So be encouraged. Um, and at this point, unless someone else has a word at the moment. Okay, then I'll have Joanna come up and share her word. Okay, um, we're going to, I'm going to play about a three minute prophecy that happened a week ago Thursday from James's Thursday morning and this is where that word came out of but before I do that I want to say Carrie I really feel an anointing um, tonight for you to begin to see yourself as one who has a quiver and as I'm speaking this I see the glory of God on you right now 
God is calling you in this season to begin to lead those that, that you've begun to have influence with and all you've done is love them. But because of who you are and the calling and the anointing on your life as a minister of the gospel, the Lord is saying, now begin to take notice of that quiver and those and begin to nurture and feed and raise them up to send them out. Because these that God has put in your life, they're not going to find themselves in churches and even in places that you go right now. But they will listen to the word of the Lord from you and God will anoint you to equip equip and train them and send them out. And the same is for you, Sophia. As I'm speaking to her, I'm seeing God's glory on you as well. This goes to you as well. God is giving you influence in your sphere. Take note of it and do not take it lightly because he's anointed you and called you. These are the beginnings of you stepping into your calling as an equipper and a trainer. You guys are fivefold. God has put this on you. You carry the weight of the kingdom. You just can't sit and listen and observe. You have to take part because it's in you and God put it in you. And this is the season to begin to exercise that in your sphere. And um, we're in a new season and things are not going to look. None of us really knows what it's going to look like. But I see you guys already be launched out. You're being launched out. So, all right. So we're going to play this word. Um, so um, I'm going to start by saying that song, Come Out of Hiding, that I played by Stephanie, I felt like that was a song to the church in this season that God is calling her out of hiding. And what was so cool is that you've been on lockdown. I'm like, we've been on lockdown. <laughs> but it was so perfect because I feel like that, that fits in with, um, with Chris's message about the quiver and the arrows because it's, it's now God has is, is begun that process of bringing us to become more like him so that we will really be his vessels going outward. And I think um, that that was a really good, a good illustration. So, okay, we'll play this short real quick. COVID came in with a spirit of fear. It was irrational fear. It was a fear we'd never felt. These riots and racism has come in with a spirit of hate. It is a hate that we are incapable, A, of withstanding in our flesh and B, solving on our own. So we have to be very careful as believers to not use absolutes when, when dealing with, with the world and people who are in deception. And we got to pray more in the spirit and less with language yes. because we're going to run an error here and we're going to cut everybody off. Because the thing is, the goal here for the enemy is to destroy. The goal here for Jesus is an awakening. So we got to get God's heart on this. And I believe that the only answer for all of this, and I think it will be greater revealed, is that place of glory that he promises us in Scripture. And in that place of glory, we are still in the situations, but these situations aren't affecting us. I don't think the early church was really worried about too much. Yes, things were happening, but it didn't say they ran when they were persecuted and scattered after Stephen. It didn't imply they ran in fear. It just said they were persecuted and scattered. Right after that, it talked about all the people being led to the Lord in the different groups. So actually, it sounds to me like they were empowered. And I think it's that thing that Steve talked about where the Holy Spirit at Pentecost where it comes upon you in such a way and it overshadows you that you're not even aware of your circumstances. So quite frankly, God could send you down to the middle of Atlanta at midnight in a riot and you would have wisdom from heaven and people would get born again and kneel and cry and repent and not anything would happen to you, but it wasn't per se swayed the word but it was with the Spirit's power. I believe that's what God set us up for. God didn't call us to be the United States of America Christian. He called us to be his kingdom, his bride, his people. 
It's time we either shake off the things of the world that hold us back and step into the kingdom of life. And yeah, it may cost us our life, but hey, it did his. So he modeled this before us, but let me tell you something about these spirits. When you no longer are afraid of them and what their power is, they have no hold. They know it, and they cannot control you. I've witnessed it firsthand. I've known of people who walk in this kind of power. And when you get there, it's freedom. It's not natural. It's dependence on the Lord. But it's a real tangible place. And I believe as believers, we would do good right now to go after that place in the Lord. I don't have the answers of how to get there, but I believe it's a place he's offering us in this time and season. And it will become the wisdom we need, the revelation we need, the finances we need, the, the way to walk in unity, the way to build his church, all of the things for the spirit this time, this season. But it is a realm. It's one we do not live in. And we have to seek our whole heart after. And um, so I, I think that, that these times are shifting and pivotal. It's just going to, you got to be all in with Christ. But you got to be all disconnected from the world. And it's not rules and regulations. It's walking in a level of the spirit that you've not known where you can love those who are deceived but bring truth by your mere presence. And I, I know people have said this, but I believe we're here now. We can step into this. I just don't exactly know what, what that match is, but it's there. I believe we're gonna we're gonna see it. So um with that, um I made a few notes for my word because I'm a word girl. And even though God gives me words and we pray it's the Holy Spirit. If I'm quoting something from the Quran, y'all know I've missed it, but <laughs> I wouldn't even know I was doing it. So maybe God's twisting something, but I, um, I went in and just kind of, um, reflected a little bit about this because, um, I believe that the glory of God is, it is a place. It's a presence. The word of God calls it Kabod. It is literally a weighty, tangible presence of God. Some people in it their bodies respond. Some people fall out. Some people shake. Some people laugh. Some people roll. Some people run around the room. Um, I mean, all kinds of manifestations. And um, But the manifestation is not the important thing. What's the important is that God comes in and that moment and begins to realign you the way he created you, his purpose, his kingdom. So um, like I had pointed out in the word, um, when COVID came in, it came in with a tangible spirit of fear like we have have not I have never felt maybe others have felt it but it was so tangible and then the riots came in with a spirit of hate like I've never seen no matter what you say it creates hatred and division and um, it will tear up the room I mean it doesn't matter you can't say the right thing under the spirit well, I believe that the Lord is saying that we have the ability to withstand these things. We do not have the ability to stand these things in the flesh, but he has a plan for us to withstand them in the spirit. The enemy wants to use these things to kill, still, and destroy, but Jesus said in John 10, 10, that his goal was to bring life and life more abundantly. Interestingly, that word life and glory are, are very connected. Because when you come into the zoe, which is the word for life there, into that fullness of life, you begin to step, tap in to the glory realm of God. It is a tangible experience. And then um, I really believe that um, there's some scriptures here that I can explain why I really believe this place of glory. And, and what I'm seeing is I've, I've known ministers to move in realms of glory in meetings. But this is something I feel like God wants us to take out of the meeting and take into the world in what we do. A place of, of glory. I believe many of um, the first disciples, apostles, operated in this realm. And so um, I believe that it's going to be... Um, 
tangible on us when it needs to be. People are going to observe. It could be a word we say. It could be healing the sick. It could be raising the dead. Or it could be simply you operating in the supernatural love of God. That You're in the middle of a heated moment. Next thing you know, you walk in the crisis and things deflate. I believe this is the kind of presence that we're going to carry. So in Philippians 419, it says, my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ. Jesus. Now, I really took a look at that, and I was like, he's going to meet all of our needs according to the riches of his glory. We've always used that as a kind of a provision scripture, but really, if you look at that, it's more talking about his glory. So, the needs that we have need of are going to be made manifest in that place. So, what supply you need? Let's say that you're beginning um, to believe God to go feed the homeless, and you need tangible supplies. There's a place in his glory for that provision. God will connect you to that. And then another scripture, 2 Corinthians 4, 6. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. Do you realize that inside of us, his light inside of us causes darkness to be dispelled? And literally, if we begin to understand this, we will not have fear to go into places that are unreached with the gospel. Like the illustration I gave about going downtown in a riot. If God calls you, you are the answer to that. And there is a displaying, a dispelling of darkness. And what the Lord illuminated is that's his grace being made manifest, the grace of salvation coming out through you. And then Ephesians 3.16 I pray that out of his glorious riches that he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Now, this is important because the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we often look at joy as somewhat like happy, feel good, whatever, but really it's strength. How many of you would agree that this hour has been very draining in the flesh? I mean, it doesn't matter what you do, but in this place of glory, what he's talking about here is that it's going to provide the tangible strength. Well, if you tie up that word strength, you connect with joy. So in this place of glory, the fullness of joy is experience, which might explain why some people laugh and some people, um, you know, just get silly and goofy. It talked about on the day of Pentecost, um, Peter got up and said, we're not drunk as you supposed because it's only nine in the morning. No, this is what the prophet Joel prophesied. So there is a manifestation of God that, that we should, that we have a right to be walking in as children of God. And I believe it's the antidote for this hour. And then in 1 Peter 1, 3, it says, His divine power has granted us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Throughout the knowledge of him, through the knowledge of him who has called us into his own glory and excellence. Do you realize that in the glory of God, there is practical divine strategies. We have solutions. We have solutions between, um, like, is COVID going to kill us or are we going to live? Do the mask work? Do the mask not work? I mean, I'm just giving you examples. Do black lives matter? Do all lives matter? I mean, we have all these debates going on. But Jesus says, I've got a strategy, and it's going to bring unity. And it's not going to go against my word, but in my spirit, it's going to be the answer. And I believe that is where he's carrying us. And yet again, it's pointing to this realm of glory. In the place of glory, we are in the world, but we are not of the same spirit. That's the other thing. We can't escape this world. We're called to this world. Jesus said he put us in our times and seasons. So he chose this time and season for us because he called us to display his splendor in this time. So I believe that um, this, is, this is our time. And in the place of glory, the true and authentic power will be released to be a witness in the kingdom with signs following. You know, we have examples of this, um, the day of Pentecost, when Stephen died as a martyr. He was the first martyr, which began persecution of the church, and the church expanded. And yet, he was in a realm of glory. 
he asked supernaturally for them to be forgiven. And as he was being stoned, he was seeing Jesus. And then it says in the end times, in the, in the book of Daniel, it talks about that the people of God will shine like the stars of heaven. I believe they will be carrying, I believe that very well possibly can be our generation, carrying that weight of glory. So I believe that the glory is a real and tangible place in the spirit. And this is our inheritance. Habakkuk 2.14 says, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Now, if you back up and think about that, the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Do you realize it's talking about us? We are that glory. We are, are hidden in Christ as the a, as a water covers the sea. And then 2 Corinthians 3.18. And we are all with unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed by the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the spirit. The glory of God is something we grow in. It's just like our walk with God. When we're coming into sanctification, we come into becoming more Christ-like. But the glory is something like you might say, well, I don't feel like I've ever really like walked in a room and demon sleep. Well, you know what? I can't say that's been a regular thing of me, but I'm encouraged because it's one degree. So I, I believe in this season is we have not understood that we as individuals can carry the glory. We've kind of left it to the famous ministers whom I'm so grateful for who've gone after the glory. Wigglesworth, I believe, is one of those. John G. Lake, um, we could, Finney, um, um, William Seymour. I mean, we could go on and on. Catherine Kuhlman, Mary Worth Eder. I mean, these guys walked in it and they were right in what they did and they brought it. But I believe we're called to be the nameless, faceless, as we've coined, ministers of the gospel, the hands and feet. We individually, me, you, Nathan, James, Dallas, we are called to tangibly walk in this glory, but we're going to need to grow in it. And first we have to grow by believing this is for us. Actually, we have to start with desire. Do we even want it? Hey, let's be honest. Maybe we don't know. Maybe we don't understand. So this is why we really need to hunger and thirst for Christ and he'll show us. And then Isaiah 43, 7, everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, whom I formed um, and made. So see, Jesus created us for this glory right there in Isaiah. He called us to this. So um, I summarize this with saying that we need to pursue the glory of God with our whole hearts because this is the answer for our day. And I believe that we, and so I believe personally right now, it's what Chris was talking about, the arrows. We're still in that process. He wants to shoot us out, get us really filled with his glory and his presence. And, um, and we're still in that place where he's getting the church ready. We're still in church preparation. I know many see a third grade awakening. I'm right there with them. I see it, but I don't think we're there yet. And um, I know that um, there's quite, what's really cool right now, big picture, a lot of the prophets, I'm sure there are some that are in different places, but a lot of the, what I would call the mainstream prophets that most of us kind of glance at seem to be very unified over what's happened, what's happening, what's going to happen. And I personally believe that once we're through beginning to walk into the season of carrying his glory, we're going to begin to be sent out for the harvest and the third great awakening that um, God is going to do that. And then the other scripture I love, it says, Acts 3.20, that the times of refreshing may come from the presence presence of the Lord, and he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus. I believe in this season, as we're learning to walk in his glory, being refreshed by his presence, he get, he's getting us ready for the harvest. So that is it. Okay. Um, I, I don't know. Thank you so much. It's amazing how the Lord intertwines the words and what he has for us tonight. And Joanna, there's power in what you just said. There's power. And I believe that this is, in a sense, the, the catalyst for what Chris was saying, right? And you've received this word, and this word has power. The Lord has said that you had a message for tonight to those that didn't even know that you had something to share, right? So I really, did you hear what she said? That the people of God 
are like the stars in heaven, shine like the stars in heaven, right? Who can even count the stars in heaven? Do you realize that there are so many stars that that's all of us? You hear what she said? It's gone away from those few to the many because God's glory is so big. He's so magnanimous that it takes all of us to show him that we each carry a piece and a part to show him. And I'd love for you to just pray that each one of us would know, just pray into that for each one that is here, okay. that we would receive that. Father God, first I bind any religious demons that would try to keep us from receiving that which is ours, Father. Religion hates the glory of God. Religion hates the presence of God. Religion hates the fullness of the Spirit because religion cannot control it. So, Father, we bind any spirits that would hinder hinder us in our mind, our will and our emotions that would cause us to be fogged up when receiving, even hearing these words, Father God. And then, Lord, I ask you to release a hunger inside of us, Father God. You said those who hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled, Father God. Let us be a hungry people, God, to be filled, with, overflowing with your presence. God, we desire to be carriers of your glory, Father, not to make our names great, but your name great, oh Jesus. Father, we need you to come fill our vessels, Father, for the work is much, and Lord, your labors are few. Lord, we do pray for the labors and the harvest, Lord, that they be filled with the glory of God, Jesus. We ask you, God, to come fill us with your presence, fill us with your power, fill us with your glory. Jesus, there's a marvelous work you want to do on the earth. Lord, there are many who are in the balance of life and death, Jesus. You want them to hear the anointed gospel of the kingdom, that they would turn, repent, Repent and be saved, healed, and delivered. Jesus, we are those mouthpieces, but Father, we need your presence. We need your glory to do so. Father, I believe that this is your hour for your sons and daughters to walk in a level of glory that you promised before the foundation of the earth, Jesus. You paid the price so that you could fill us up, Father. Allow us to yield our vessels to you, Holy Spirit. Fill us to fullness, to overflowing. And Father, I pray that we would be mindful that this is not for us. This is not for us to have bigger and better, for us to be smarter and brighter, for us to be seen and to be known. But this is for you, Jesus. This is for your kingdom to come and your will to be done, Father God. We are just your hands and your feet, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray that all that is done in your name, you are given the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name your hearts cry out as we go into this song just let your hearts cry out to him and receive what he has for you because this place of glory cannot be about us we've got to lay down everything all of our agendas all of our pride everything of flesh, everything of this world in order to step into this glory, in order to be that splendid arrow taken out and shot to the target. So Lord, we lay it down and we lift you high, only you, Jesus, above all else. We thank you, Lord. Mm, we thank you. So I know that there are... Um, least a couple of people here that have corporate words to share. I'm going to give you an opportunity. Come on up. So earlier today, um, I was praying a lot, and the Lord just gave me a vision, and I was um, in the throne of God, in the throne room, and I was um, in Father God's lap, and um, so I want to read that real quick. These are real short. So, before the throne of God, I sat on Father God's lap, and I placed my head on his heart and heard it beat, and he said to me, it beats for souls. 
but it was the way that he said it. He was saying it like, hey, you know, you, you need to hear my heart, that it's all about souls. And it reminded me of the harvest. And so then when we were here in worship, again, I was in the throne room and I was in worship. We all were. And I saw myself at the bottom of the stairs in God's mighty throne. And um, I don't know if you want to call them stair steps, but there's a lot of them. <laughs> there's many. And, um, and I was at the bottom of the stairs, and I was just prostrate before the stairs, the very first one. And I was just, you know, before the Lord, just in the throne room, just before the stairs, just wanting to be close to him, just wanting to be in his presence just seeking him and hungry for him, just wanting to be closer to him, wanting to be back in his lap. And I was prostrated out before him, before the Lord's throne, and the Lord Jesus came, and he lifted me up, and he picked me up, and he took me by the hand, and he led me up, you know, all the stairs. It was actually really quick, though. I love heaven, and time does not really exist in heaven. And so... um so Jesus sat down, and then I sat in his lap like a child. And, um, and he held me, and he comforted me. And so I felt so safe in his arms as I sat with him on the throne. And so there was two scriptures that came to my mind. Um, this one, Ephesians 2, 5, 7, that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It's only by great God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. And then, of course, you know, the other scripture about the souls was about working in his harvest, working in the fields, about how Jesus gave us the great commission. And so um, that's what I had. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Did you hear that? She was prostrate, right? This is such a season for us to humble ourselves before the Lord and not to lift ourselves up, but to allow him to lift us up. So I thank you, Lord. I know there are some others with words, corporate words. Are you ready to share? Okay. Well, don't be shy. <laughs> this is God. Just kidding. He has a better voice than me. Where's Fred when you need him? <laughs> um, I usually write this whenever we're in worship. And, you know, since there's been so much going on lately, I've just gone back and forth where I'll get excited and I'm like, okay, you know, we're created and for, for this. And then there are other days where it's like, oh, man, I just get so bummed out because you just hear doom and gloom all the time, but I, I felt that God was saying, you know, we, th this is not a day for just to get filled up on Sundays. You've got to come to me every day and press in. And um, he said, uh, especially during these times, and I felt that <clears throat> he was saying, I'm the ultimate creator, your love, your guide, your everything. I fashioned the earth in my mighty hands. I created you with my heart. Intimacy, pure love, spirit-filled, Perfection comes from me. I gave you so much when I sent Jesus. I uh, just, just accept this gift. I know you're down when you stumble, but I'm here to lift you up. Jesus wipes all the sin away, so don't dwell on it. Just abide in me, and I will abide in you. It's all good with me. When you focus on me, then your eyes are not on the world, where fear is spreading like disease. I've overcome the world. All that which you fear, I gave you all you need, so hold my hand and run with me. Do you trust me? Really? All the time? 
Don't build your faith, your house, your hope on sinking sand. Stay on the solid rock and you will not fall. I will hold you strong to withstand the waves that knock over the weak and the faint. You are to help show them the light. They will be able to find me when they look at you. Think on whatever is peace, noble, praiseworthy things, and I will be there. My river of life throws, flows through you and into my children, my little ones, my sheep. So my chosen press in like never before. There's so much I have waiting for you. Thank you for the words of encouragement, Lord. So um, we've had a prayer request on Facebook. Um, Michelle is having problems with her back. So if I'm going to pray if you'll just be in agreement with me. And brother, I know that you have been given the gift of healing. Um, so if there's something that you'd like to say, then just let me know. So, Father God, I thank you. I thank you, Father, for complete healing. I thank you, Jesus, that by your stripes we are healed. It is done. It is complete. And right now, Michelle, we speak to your back, and we command it to become healed and whole now in Jesus' name. All ligaments be strengthened. All pain go. Inflammation go. Right now, be released in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. I thank you, Lord, that you don't always give confirmation with visions, but Michelle, I just see fire, a fire that's come on your back. Um, so I thank you. You're probably feeling heat. If you want to give us a testimony, we'd be happy to share it live here. Um, but we thank you, Jesus. We thank you that you are the healer. And we thank you, Lord. Mm. All right. Who else, who else has a word this evening? Who's ready to share? You ready? Daniel's going to come share a word. I have a personal word. Uh, what is your name? John, as we were worshiping, I, I saw you, uh, rest, I saw a restlessness in you. Actually, your feet were hopping up and down, and I said, Lord, show me him in the spirit. And then he showed me you on your back, completely on your back, floating in the river of life. And you were totally buoyant, weightless, and you had this childlike smile on your face, and you were total peace. And I said, Lord, what? you want him to know and he said tell tell him that just as his mother broke water to give him natural birth I broke water from my side to give him new life and second birth and he says you are born again and more than a son you are to him he told me that your gifting is that of a prophet and he said that just like Moses you would say in your heart, but you're not eloquent, you're slow to speech, and he said to remind you who created the mouth and who created the tongue, and the Lord said tonight the angel from heaven takes the coal and he places it over your lips, and he's activating you and your gift of prophecy, and so if, if, uh, if we could pray for you. You say, you say your name was John. Mm. Father, thank you for John. Father, thank you for how jealous you are for John. You knew him as you were forming him in his mother's womb. You knew the gifting and the calling that you'd placed on his life. And I thank you for this restlessness with him, within him, the restlessness that Peter had when he said, Lord, if it's you, call me out on the water. Thank you that you broke not only water, but blood for John. And Lord, tonight we activate him and his gifting and his calling to be your mouthpiece. You are, he is an arrow in your quiver. 
and you are pulling him out. You are polishing him, and you are shooting him at the enemy of this world that lies, steals, and destroys the joy that belongs to your children. Thank you for John. Lord, we activate him tonight. We pray for your visitation. We pray that he would have a manifestation of the angel of heaven, that he would feel the coal coming across his lips, that he would sense the washing and the cleansing and your voice speaking to him. John, you're mine. I declare you clean. I activate you. I will speak through you. I will teach you the words to say. The Lord says, John's thirsty. He says, John, drink of me. Drink of my living water. You will never thirst again. And out of your belly will flow living waters. In Jesus' name. And uh, John, I really sense, um, I agree 100% with that word. Um, and, and that anointing, the prophetic anointing, often people carry different types of prophetic anointing. I see you as a son of Issachar anointing, knowing the times and seasons. Just as we were talking earlier, you understand clearly what the Lord is doing in a season, in an hour. You hear clearly, and you can discern rightly between that which is of the Lord and that which is of the enemy. That's the prophetic anointing. That's what he's seeing on you. So I just say wholeheartedly, yes, and amen. And, um, and now you're going to have to get the boldness to speak, <laughs> which you don't, you, you know how to speak, but you like to be kind of in the shadows. And God says, no, I'm calling you out to the front to speak because I want the words I put inside you to be heard because you hear well. And you will help many to hear what I'm saying and doing in the seasons that lie ahead. In Jesus' name. And John, I, you are being called out to speak, and I see you with a specific group of people, and and they're very hard people. They're, I don't know if I'm seeing you in a prison ministry, but it's actually your gentleness that's going to reach them. So no fear going forward into this, because you are how God made you to be. You are who God made you to be, and he's going to use those things to reach those he has for you to reach. So we just thank you, Jesus. Hey, Charlie and Linda, I have a word for you guys. It's really short, but it's a new season and new dimensions. The Lord is about to bring you into a new place with him. But with that, this season, there's going to be change, but it's good change because he's prepared and equipped you for this change. Um, but it is, he's going to take you into a new dimension. I thank you, Lord. And Lord, I just see, it's like I saw a whirlwind around the two of you, and I wasn't quite sure what that was, but the Lord is saying that he's binding you together, but that it's not just the two of you. There's a lot of married couples that he's actually, at this time, it's like I see the rope of the Holy Spirit binding them together stronger than ever so that they're going to move in ministry and for the glory of the Lord as one. He's allowed a season for to move separate and apart, but the three strands together are hard to be broken, right? So you two are a sense in that spearhead going forth. You two are the example, the trailblazers that the Lord is using to show that this is what I'm doing with my couples. So don't be dismayed if, if others wonder, what is this difference about you? There's actually going to be some envy that from inner circles, from other couples that are going to see this, but know that you're almost going to even be able to speak for the Lord as one and that there's going to be just a unity there that you've never felt before. 
So, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. And, Father God, I just pray that you would show them, that you would give the vision. Lord, I see it so strongly and implanted in my mind. I just pray that my words have been able to, to share it well, Lord. But I thank you that you've brought them together in unity in the Holy Spirit as one. And that, Lord, they are a catalyst for all these married couples that you're sending out. Not as single arrows, but as arrows together. I thank you, Lord. That it'll be new, it'll be different, but it'll also be a place of familiarity because you are the one who is familiar to each of them. Lord, I thank you that this isn't something that they're going to have to work towards, that this isn't something that they're going to have to even learn, that it's just something that they're going to do and walk in because you are the one doing it in and through them. That is their surrender to you. And as they prefer each other and move together, Lord, that this is when it's going to flow. This is when it's going to come out. Father God, I thank you that this isn't just about them, but this is about what you're doing in the body of Christ. In this thing called marriage, Lord, that you're doing this in your church and that they are examples of what's to come. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Who else is ready to share what the Lord has for tonight? Remember, each one of us has something each one of us has a position, a calling, um, a charisma, a gift of the Holy Spirit to use for the building up of the body. So, Alicia, I just, I keep seeing you, but I keep seeing you speaking words over people. So I don't, I can't tell if that, do you have a word for tonight? Okay. Yeah, the word is gentleness, and it started with John. Um, uh, you know, I think that gentleness is actually not weakness, it's strength. And it takes a lot of gentleness in preferring one another. When you were praying that for, for them, preferring one another and, uh, you know, putting each other first in gentleness and in love I think that's the space that God dwells in his church his body and so it's just a I had the opportunity to have some gentleness with a friend um, over the last few months who doesn't look like me um, and so I we're friends we're very good friends and but it had been months and weeks since I had talked with her and I needed to ask her a question, just a very simple question. Hey, do you know a contact that I can ask for such and such, so and so, whatever. So I texted her the question and I thought, I haven't talked to her in months, so let me see how she's doing. So I, I texted her first, do you know a contact? And then I was following it up with, by the way, how are you doing? I miss you, I wanna you know, know how you are. And in the middle of writing the text, I got distracted and forgot to send the rest of the text. So um, no reply. And two days later, it took two days for her to process what that did to her. The, in, the, the insensitivity, the, the not thinking of her first, coming to her with a need rather than how are you doing? And so Two days later, I get a text, and she said, normally, I would just overlook it, you know. But in this time and in this season, I can't overlook it. I need to let you know that that was hurtful and rude. <laughs> and I was like, you just call me rude? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know. Um, but it was my sister in Christ, and so I was like, She's giving me a gift right now because if she had not told me that, I wouldn't have known that that's how that affected her. So rather than my knee-jerk reaction was to defend myself and explain myself, 
I didn't mean it like that. I had texted you and I got distracted. And But no, in the moment, what was important was her heart and connecting with her heart. So I said, I am sorry. I know that I didn't mean that, but it didn't matter. What was important is that I hurt her. So whether I meant to or not, didn't matter. So I said, I am sorry. And I, and I wanted to know how that affected her. So I said, what did you think when you, when you read that text from me? What did you think? What were you feeling in that moment? I wanted to know so that I could apologize for the hurt. And she said, well, I didn't feel cared for. And that gave me clarity on how my nonchalantness in this time affected her. And so I said, I'm so sorry. Um, I want to be very clear. I value you and I love you as a sister in Christ. And, you know, I was just very clear about that. So it was gentleness in that moment and love and a courage to ask the question, what did it feel like? When I did that to you, what did it feel like? Because I want to know so that I can at least know, you know, um, so that I know what I'm apologizing for when I say I'm sorry, <laughs> you know. So it is. It's gentleness, um, preferring one another, yielding to each other. Co-submission, marriage is a great example of that. And, and so anyway, I think that's the word. That was it, just the gentleness. So sorry it came with a story. No, no, that's good. Thank you. Thank you for that beautiful example. And, you know, there's power in our testimonies. And we may be wondering, why, why did the Lord share a word about gentleness after his glory, and that he's going to use us to display his splendor and to do his mighty works, right? But this is what it takes. We've got to be humble. We've got to prefer one, God, before ourselves. And then as we prefer God before ourselves, we'll prefer each other and show who he is because he preferred us above himself, that is us displaying his glory to be gentle, to be kind, to prefer one another. So, Father God, I thank you for that. I thank you for the testimony of my sister and what that can look like in our lives to prefer one another. I, I think, too, I just want to affirm Alicia's testimony because I think it really ties in a lot with what Joanna shared as you were giving your word, the Lord was really putting on my heart the difference between being a glory carrier and a glory bearer. And, and we will carry God's glory when we're glory bearers, but you can seek to carry his glory just for yourself. Like that feeling that we have when we're in the presence of God and however that affects you, you know, you're just like, oh, this feels so good. I, I want more of this for me. But the glory bearer goes out and puts it out for others. And that's what the gentleness is for it's others focused it's the yielding to the others and and i believe the lord is is tying those two together and saying that's my glory it's not for you to have to keep it's for you to have to outpour what i poured into you the love i poured into your heart the glory i've poured into you now you go and you pour it out and it's interesting that that word gentleness has come up so many times tonight and and was in one of the scriptures even from the word. So uh, we just thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do, not just in us, but through us, Lord, that you're not just, um, we thank you that you love us, and we thank you that that you are touching each of our hearts even today, and that you're going to touch us in greater ways, and we thank you, Lord, that you'll use us, and that there will be signs and wonders, but God, let us never stop short of showing your glory to others. Let us never stop until someone else has experienced your grace, Father. We pray this in Jesus' name. This too, because this is like on the prophetic season. We are in a season that it's easy to become offended. And like in both places, your friend got offended because it's in the air. 
but then you could have gotten offended. But because you let the Lord bring that gentleness in your spirit, you humbled yourself and you asked the question. And I think it's very clear that we need to think like that in all that we do, all of our Facebook posts, all of our relationship dealings when we're in public. Like we may see something that offends us. I, I see lots of things. And I'm actually, my personality right now is in the opposite season. <laughs> I'm more like, I'm done with this, you know, but God's like, no, no, no. But um, all the more why we have to stretch ourselves in that gentleness because we need to hear one another because the enemy is bringing division. He is dividing the church like we have never known. It is, it is not just the world. It is, is equal in the church. And it's nuts because these demons are just running amok right now. But we have the power to overcome that by not responding or reacting, but by yet responding, reacting to the Holy Spirit. And, um, and so I do believe it connects to carrying that glory. You saw the heart of your sister that was offended. You didn't take the offense and say, well, forget you. You can be offended with me if you want. Bye. You know, <laughs> but, but you were like, oh my gosh, I did not know. What did I do? And you didn't justify. That's, that's a key thing. When we're with the Lord, we don't need to justify. We need to own it because if we own it, we'll get free. And we'll walk in freedom. That's a big thing with the Lord. You know, he quite clearly sees everything. Just own it. Own it. Repent of it. Move through it. And you'll find that place of his presence and his glory back again. So I saw two very important things. I'm glad you shared. Is this on? Okay. Um, for John. Um, when Daniel was it Daniel? It was given John a word, I saw a vision of a teddy bear over you, and I believe that's I was laughing because they kept saying gentleness, and I didn't. This was before they were saying gentleness, so I think it just meant like that you were going to give comfort to many, like as in like a teddy bear gives comfort to many. That's kind of what I was getting from that. Um, <laughs> also, when um, Chris was giving the word on the archer, the archers. Um, I saw a vision of the Lord of the Rings. I love that movie. And um, in their, they were like the first defense. The archers were like the first defense and um, in war against the enemy. And I feel like that's definitely us that were like that first defense against the enemy. We're praying and we're pushing back the enemy. And, um, and also, um, yep, that basically was my word. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Mm, yes, come up, please. One of the things God's had me do every day is he's called me to get up every day and, and to walk in the off of the, the responsibility of um, interceding in prayer for everything around the world. And so I asked him, you know, well, how do I know each day what to pray? And he said, every day you'll ask me, you know, and then you'll pray out what I tell you. Um, and this one here, I think, is a word collectively to everyone because this word was, he, he gave it to me yesterday, and I don't have that sheet with me, so I'm really trying to remember all the points of it. But um, he said, I want you to pray for peace for my body. He said, many are growing weak and they're growing weary, and they're losing strength. And he said that um, many are crying out to him worldwide for God to restore things as they were. But he said they're not going back. And he said he's doing a lot in the world right now, but he's also just getting started. And kind of the day before, he had given me a word that basically, if you want to sum it up, it's... Um, you know, put your seatbelt on, hold on to the handlebars, keep all your hand, hands and arms in the car because the ride's going to get bumpy, you know. And he said, um, the people are, are getting weak through this time, though. And he said, but I love them very, very much. And I want you to intercede for them for peace. They need to know my peace. And uh, he said, be strong and courageous, um, and I bring you peace. 
So I, I believe that's what we're supposed to be praying right now. He said the body worldwide is growing weary, and many just aren't seeing and understanding what he's doing. Yeah. Father God, I thank you so much for this time. I thank you for what you are doing. We know that for a harvest to come, things have to be shaken. So we are so thankful that you are shaking things and you're bringing a harvest. And we pray, Father God, for your, that understanding to go into the hearts and minds of your believers worldwide, that the Holy Spirit would go through into the body all over and speak to them, and, sh and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will fulfill their heart and minds and give them strength and courage in these days that as the as the ride gets a little bumpy as things shake more so that the harvest can come in that the body is strengthened and not weakened that they grow stronger day by day by day and father god we know that that can only be accomplished through your holy spirit so we thank you for your presence in our lives and we pray that this goes through the world worldwide through your believers and through your church to bring about your peace in these final hours in jesus name amen Thank you for sharing. Yes. We thank you, Lord. Thank you. Um, just as she was praying, I was just overcome. As the Lord reminded me that we need to be strengthened because we must stand. We must stand. We are not made to retreat. That The armor of God has nothing to cover our back. Because we were not made to retreat. We were not made to turn our backs. That we are to stand or to advance. One or the other. There's no retreat in the kingdom. And it can become weary when you've hold up, held up your shield and all of those arrows. And they become hot and strong and, and big, right? That it can. But thank you for praying that. It's as if I could feel the Lord refreshing me even in that moment. But that we must not tolerate the evil that is going around. We must not tolerate the demonic that are at work. And they're strong. And it's easier to just almost become complacent with that. And to just accept that others are, are moving in that. But we cannot do that. This is a season and a time where tolerance is, in a sense, coming into agreement with the evil, the Lord says, do not tolerate Jezebel. But it's not just Jezebel we're not to tolerate. It's all of the spirits that are at work. So, Father God, I thank you just that you have given us eyes to see. And I pray for greater discernment for your church so that we would know. And, Lord, let us have those gentle hearts so we'll not judge our brothers and sisters but love them through it and intercede for them during this time. But Father, may we not tolerate anything that's not of you. We thank you, Jesus. Joanna? Is it Bruce? Okay. So um, I just want you to know, I, when I was up there, I just want you to know what I sense. The Lord has put a strong prophetic anointing on you, but it's unique. Um, you carry strength. And when you come in the room, it's like when other leaders are around you, they gather that strength and they feel your agreement. And I just want you to know that the Lord is going to use you mightily in many places. I know that you're connected. We talk to different places, but I don't think you realize that God has sent you to each of these places as a strength. As she was talking about the body getting weak, you bring strength, and you are a strength bringer. And, um, and the Lord is using you in this season. And with that, he's equipping you for the, his own work that he's going to call you to. Because you carry a prophetic anointing. You're like a messenger. Though you might not be one that would go up and say to this one and that one and this one. Though you do have those words. I see you as one that will bring messages into regions. Messages to other groups of people. And it will be the word of the Lord. And, and it will really strategize what they're feeling. It will bring that agreement they need to step into that that God's calling them to. So I just want to encourage you with that and thank God. So I just want to pray for you if that's okay. 
Father God, I thank you for Bruce. I thank you for what you've placed upon his life. I thank you for his yieldedness. Lord, I know that with that strength, he carries your joy. So I thank you, Lord God, that he will deposit that joy into many places as he is carrying your light. He is one that carries your glory. So I pray, Father God, at the places that you send him, that you would just pour him out over the people and in the place that you'll begin to illuminate the places you're going to send him with a message messages, the messages of the Lord for the time and the season. Father, I thank you for this vessel, and I thank you most importantly for his heart, because Lord, he is one, Lord, that's humble. He is one that's laid down. He is one that is just willing, and he said yes. So I just pray, Father God, that you continue to bless him, anoint him, and pour yourself in him and through him. In Jesus' name, amen. So, Randy, I just saw that you were in your house and you were just throwing things out, just throwing just random objects out saying, I don't need this, I don't need that, I don't need this. And they weren't bad things. I mean, I even saw like a bookcase and desk and chairs. They weren't bad things at all. But this is a season of purging for you. And they are not necessarily things that are sinful, but these are things that you know that you can't carry with you to go to the place that the Lord has for you. And God is pleased with that. And he says, continue in that, my son. Continue. Continue. He's going to show you. He's going to highlight. That's what it was. They, they, to me, they looked random, but these are things that the Lord highlighted to you where he says, you can have this. This isn't a bad thing. Or you can have this that I have for you over here. But you can't have both. And you were just getting rid of it and getting rid of it. So I thank you, Lord. I thank you that Randy has chosen you above all else. I thank you, Lord, that you are showing him. You are giving him strategy each day, each moment to see what to let go of. To have more of you. To know more of you. To display more of you. In Jesus' name. Daniel. Hey, what's your name? KJ. KJ, how old are you? 13. 13. Well, it, as the Lord gave me a word for John that he uh, showed me that he was weightless on his back in water, he, he said to tell me that you have weight. When you enter into a room, the atmosphere changes. And he said that you are a Joseph to him. And when I looked over at you, I actually saw you in a coat of many colors. And he said that you are going to shift the atmosphere and that you're going to walk in places where you're not going to understand why people are doing what they're doing. And out of your lips, you will speak the words that Joseph spoke, that what they meant for evil, God meant for good. And that you have royalty in your, destiny, in, in your destiny. And that you are a child of his that he is going to elevate into, into great prosperity, actually. Uh, but you're going to go through some tough times to get there. And what your weight is, is your knowledge of whose you are. And who your father says you are to him. And so I just... I'm excited to give you that word. That's, that's quite an anointing, a Joseph anointing over your life. And remember, the, remember this word to you, that uh, out of your lips, you will speak the very words. What was meant for evil, God will use for good. And you're going to speak light into the darkness around you. And God's going to use you as his light to many. And you will bring many to him. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Anybody else? Sure, come on. We're now to share a testimony. It's a short testimony, but it goes along with uh, what your word of tonight with the arrows. Um, last night, uh, I was uh, in a meeting with um, my church. We just um, got a new building, 
because our small church is growing really fast. We have a lot of young couples with many babies, and uh, they're on fire for Jesus Christ. And we were inaugurating last night in prayer the building, and Felicia, who is one of our missionaries, she found a physical arrow <laughs> in our yard, of the, in the yard of the church. And she brought it in last night and shared with us that she received a prophetic word uh, when she saw that arrow. She received a word from God saying that she, uh, God is going to shoot us uh, as arrows with fire. So it goes, uh, you know, I was uh, uh, blessed to hear you. uh, <clears throat> your word tonight. Thank you. Yes. Yes, I thank you, Lord. I thank you that you confirm what you're doing by the mouth of two and three witnesses and that you speak through your people, Father, what you're going to do before you do it. Thank you for speaking to us. Yes. Well, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and pray. It's been such a full night. It's been a precious night. I thank each and every one of you because you are carriers of God. You are carriers of God's light. And when you come and we come together, we are all blessed because each one of us are here together. So Lord, I thank you. I thank you for all of my brothers and sisters. Lord, I thank you for bringing us together in unity. I thank you for your words that you've spoken tonight, Lord. I thank you for your encouragement for your exhortation, Lord, and for your call, your call of action to lay ourselves down, to, to hunger and thirst for you, Lord. So I bless each one in the name of Jesus, and I thank you all for coming in Jesus.